Hey there everybody. In this physics video we are going to look at some examples of how we use what we know so far about forces and vectors to figure out missing forces that we don't know on objects which are in equilibrium. Remember equilibrium could mean objects at rest or it could mean objects in motion but at a constant velocity. Both those situations are referred to as equilibrium. So I'm going to give you a basic process to kind of sort of follow. And as you get better at this, you may find that these things become more and more second nature. The first thing that you're always going to do when you encounter a, a object, forces on it, you want to figure out what the forces are, you're going to draw a free body diagram. Draw all the forces, including the directions, and make sure that you draw them to scale as best you can. The second thing that you're going to do, if there's any forces that aren't parallel or perpendicular to the x and y axis, for the most part right now that means up, down, left, and right, you're going to resolve those into x and y components. Basically get rid of the angles. That's where all of our vector knowledge um, comes into play. The third thing is we're going to write a net force equation for each direction. So one for the x, one for the y. The fourth thing we're going to do is set that net force equation equal to zero. Remember that objects in equilibrium, the forces on them are balanced, so the sum, vector sum, has to be zero. That's a consequence of our first law of motion, or you may refer to that as the law of inertia. And then once we have those net force equations, we can solve for the thing that we're missing. So our free body diagram in resolving those forces into components will help us write our net force equation, set it equal to zero, and then that's the equation that we use to solve for the thing we're missing. So we're going to look at three examples together. If you're actually in my class, you have a um, handout with these questions on there. If not, you should be able to find a link to these questions in the section below. So here's the first question. I've got some random object with one two, three, four, five different forces acting on it. We know a couple of them. We know the friction going to the left. We know the um, tension in string one going to the right. And our job is to find the other forces. The other thing that we know is that the object has a mass of 40 kilograms. And that's important because that's going to tell us what the weight of the object is. So let's kind of go through our steps. I've given you the free body diagram, so check on that. All the forces are left, right, up, and down, so we don't have any forces to resolve in this situation. So the next thing we need to do is write those net force equations. In the x direction, I'm going to make right be my positive direction. And so I'm going to make T1 and T2 positive, make the force of friction negative. In the y direction, I'm going to make up be my positive direction. And so the normal force is positive, the weight is negative. So I write Fn minus Fg equals the sum of the forces. So I've got that step completed. Check on that. Next thing to do, since we know this object is in equilibrium, because I'm telling you it's in equilibrium, set the net force equal to zero in both directions. So equilibrium conditions, check. So I'm going to work first with my x equation. I can now rewrite my net force equation like that. 0 equals t1 plus t2 minus friction. And then I can solve that for my unknown. Looking for friction, or excuse me, I'm looking for t2. So I'm going to add friction to both sides and subtract t1 for both sides. So t2 is isolated. And then I'm going to show my substitution. And so we get T2 equals 55 newtons. It's good habit to always write the direction with any vector quantity. So I'm going to write my answer as 55 newtons to the right. That's the direction that T2 is pointing. Um, I highly recommend that you always solve your unknown symbolically first and then show your substitution after that. As a um, teacher, it helps me figure out what you do right and what you're doing wrong. 
and as a grader, it'll get you more credit if you were to happen to make a mistake. If I can tell exactly where your mistake is. So let's look at the stuff on the right, and let's solve for the normal force. So I can write my net force equation like that. Solving for the normal force, I just get that it's equal to the weight. The next thing we have to do is find out what the weight is. And so we can find the weight by multiplying the mass by the gravitational field strength, which is little g. I know on Earth, little g has a value of 10 newtons per kilogram. And so multiplying that by 40 gives me a weight of 400 newtons. So that means my normal force is 400 newtons. And then I'm going to go ahead and include the direction. So I'm going to say that the normal force is 400 newtons going up. And so we've done the three steps necessary to get to our net force equation. Free body diagram, resolving forces, write the net force equation. We set it equal to zero, and then we just solve that equation for the missing unknown. So if you can get to this point right here, this point right here, you've done all the physics. After that, it's just a little bit of algebra. So let's look at the second example together. In this example, we've got an object that's hanging from two strings, T1, which is slanted up and to the left, and T2, which is directly horizontal to the right. So I've kind of got the um, startings of a free body diagram, if you will, but I don't have a complete free body diagram. So I'm just going to turn this picture into a good free body diagram. I'm going to draw the weight going down, T2 going to the right, T1 going up and to the left at a 60 degree angle relative to the horizontal. So I've got my free body diagram now. The next thing I need to do is resolve T1. It's at an angle, I need to resolve it into components. So I'm going to draw a separate vector diagram. Don't add it to this. Don't change anything about your free body diagram, but draw a separate vector diagram down here. I'm going to show the x component and the y component, and then there's the 60 degree angle, and we're told that the tension in the string is 400 newtons. So I know that I can find ty by using the sine function. Sine 60 degrees would be opposite, which is t1y, over t1, it's hypotenuse. And so that's just an equation that I can solve for t1 comma y. And that would look something like that. And then you'd get something like 346-ish newtons. So as you're working this with me, um, make sure you know how to use your scientific calculator still. So actually crunch the numbers. Type in 400 sine 60 degrees, however your calculator wants you to put that in, and make sure you get the same thing I got, so that there's no problems there. I'm going to do the same thing with the x component. I'm going to use a cosine for this. Solve the cosine function for the x component, t1x. Do my substitution. And for that, you would get exactly 200 newtons. Conveniently enough, the cosine of 60 degrees is 1, which might be something worth remembering. Okay, so we've got step 2 down. We've resolved the tension into components. Let's do step 3 and write the net force equations. Going up, I have T1y. Going down, I have the weight, and so my net force in the y direction equation looks like that. To the right, I've got T2. To the left, I've got the x component of T1, so my x equation is going to look like that. So net force equations, check. Next thing to do is to use Newton's first law. We know it's in equilibrium, so the net force will be zero. So check on that. Rewrite it. Now all i got to do is solve for my unknown. So solving for the weight, just equal to T1 comma Y, so FG equals 346.4-ish newtons. Might include the direction as well. The question asks me to find the mass, so I'm just going to take that weight equation and then get M by itself, so divide both sides by little g, the gravitational field. And so now my uh, substitution will look like that. So all I'm doing is divide by 10. 
Um, and then I'm going to round that off to like the nearest significant figure or approximate to the nearest significant figure. So it rounds your answers to something reasonable. So I'm going to say that that's about 35 kilograms. I'm going to do the same thing with the stuff on the right. Make that equal zero. Solve it for T2. And then 200 newtons is T1x, so 200 newtons must be T2. And then the thing I'm going to add to that again is the direction. T2 is pulling to the right, so I'm going to state that it's 200 newtons pulling to the right. So you can kind of see the basic idea on this question was the same as the first question that we did. The only difference is, is that we actually had to resolve a vector in this situation. So if you have a vector that's at an angle, you have to resolve it first, and then you don't actually use that vector in your net force equations, you use the components in your net force equations. So notice that over here, I didn't use the 400 at all. I used the components instead. So once you do the resolution, you're done with the actual value for that force because it's the components that are really important to us. Let us look at one more example together. Here you're given something that says a 20 kilogram box is being drug across a floor at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second by a string which exerts 18 newtons of force at a 37 degree angle relative to the floor. Find the normal force and the friction force on the box. So first step is to draw a free body diagram. In this situation, I'm not given it, so I've got to come up with everything on my own. So there's a box. I know that a box has weight, so I'm going to draw the force of gravity going down. I'm told that its tension is at an angle relative to the floor, so maybe my tension will look like that. I know that it's moving at a constant velocity, so there must be something pulling to the left, and that's probably the friction force that it asked me to find. And so there's my friction force going to the left. And then I know because it's on a floor that there's probably a normal force on it. So I'm going to draw my normal force upward. Notice I did not draw it as um, large as the weight because the tensions also exert in the force upward. So the normal force is going to be smaller than the weight. So there are my four forces. Free body diagram is done. I have a force that's at an angle, so my next move is to resolve that force into components. So I'm going to do a separate vector diagram, draw the components, Tx, Ty. There's the 37 degree angle. So this is going to look a lot like the other vector diagram that we did. I'm going to use the cosine to find the x component, since Tx is adjacent to 37 degrees. And you get like 14.8 for that. And I'm going to use a sine for the y component. And you get like 10.8 newtons for the y component. Now that I've got the tension resolved, I don't have to worry so much about that. I have to worry about these two numbers, these two components. So next step, after we resolve our tension into components is to come up with a net force equation. So my net force equation in the y direction, I've got two forces going up, the normal force and the y component of tension, and then the weight's pulling it down. So minus Fg because it's in the opposite direction. And then in the x direction, I've got Tx going to the right, friction going to the left, so my net force equation will just be Tx minus friction. So net force equations are done. And then set those equal to zero because the object is being moved at a constant velocity. Real quick, notice that the actual size of that velocity doesn't matter. That two meters per second has nothing to do with the problem. I'm just gonna scratch it out. That two doesn't mean anything. It's the constant velocity part that is important. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite my net force equations, set them equal to zero, and then all i got to do is solve that for my unknown. So 
solving for Fn, I would get something like that. I could find the weight again, because weight equals mass times the gravitational field. And so multiplying by 10 is not too hard. Make it 200 newtons. And so now I can solve or substitute for the weight and Ty. And I find that the normal force is about 189 newtons. And again, go ahead and include the direction. The direction is up. Do the same thing in the x direction. Set my equation equal to 0. Friction equals Tx. So friction equals about 14.8 newtons. So you can round that to 15 newtons. And, and again, include the direction. It's going to the left. So the things to remember here. Follow those five basic steps. Draw a free body diagram. Resolve any forces that are at an angle into x and y components. Write a net force equation in each direction. Set each net force equal to zero, because all these things right now are in equilibrium. Later on, we'll learn about what happens when they're not in equilibrium and things are speeding up or slowing down. And then after that, it's just a little bit of algebra. Solve for the thing you're missing. For the most part, it's simple algebra. It's like adding and subtracting. Nothing too exotic. Really, really, really important, as your teacher, show these things every single time. Do not skip these steps. Do not get in too much of a hurry. Um, it'll make things more confusing for you when you make a mistake, and it's more difficult for me to see what you're doing right versus what you're doing wrong. And then as a grader, unlike a test or on the AP exam, for example, the more work you show, the more credit you typically get. So those are the five things I need to see every time when you have to figure out the forces on an object. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to jot them down now so you don't forget about them and bring them to me in class. Till then, ta-ta.